Hi guys, welcome back to Morant's Rants. Plenty of good information, a little bit of motivation, a whole lot of truth and financial advice. So on the screen here, this is a guy named Rich, and he is Review Tech USA. There's over a million followers on YouTube, and he decided yesterday to make a video about GameStop. So Rich, I'm going to watch this video and I'm going to educate you on what exactly is happening with GameStop because you appear to be misinformed. But no cheap shots. No, just straight data. I'm too tired for it. You know, I actually did 11 miles this morning. But uh, let's go ahead and watch this video. Talking about GameStop USA again, but here is the thing. This is interesting because this shows physically with video evidence that the writing is on the wall. I saw this coming a long time ago. It took a little longer than I thought. I don't want to see GameStop die, but reality is reality and you have to accept it. Let's get into it. Why was I so serious in an intro? I have birds on my table and a horse. Skip it up and that up. So I don't need to tell you that buying physical games is a dying art. Art, I don't know, whatever, we'll go with that. Um, if you actually look at statistics and numbers, which I'm doing right now, this comes from gamesindustry.biz. When it comes to PC games, which I already do this, this is globally too, okay? 98% of game sales for PC gamers is 98% are buying them digitally. 2% are buying boxed. I'd love to meet those 2%. <laughs> Nothing to say anything wrong with them, it's just like, I, I would just, but why? It, it, it's not even like, oh, my internet connection's slow. A lot of times there's no damn data or virtually no data on the disc anyway. So what the hell's the point? It's not gonna save you any download time or. So I'll stop right there. Um, I absolutely agree with this. You know, I'm a PC gamer. I don't have a console that I play. Now I have five children. We have three PlayStation 4s, one PlayStation 5. We do have the Wii. We do have a Switch. We do have, um, I don't know, a Super Nintendo and a Nintendo original. I have everything I, I could possibly want on the gaming console side. But yes, on the PC side, you're absolutely correct. The unfortunate part where you're, there's like a disconnect for you, but we'll keep going because I'm going to let you say your piece, but I'll show you the disconnect after. Remember PC gaming when we're done minimal download time it'll save you and in the console market globally 72 percent of consumers are buying their games digitally that is a huge number and if you're a big box retailer especially a big box retailer that main focus is selling physical games see where i'm going with this that's a very very concerning number very concerning. Well, we actually got a vivid picture on how. Before we go into your vivid picture, because he's going to show a video right now, guys, of an empty GameStop. Now, I've shown you numerous videos on my channel where we actually went to GameStop for the midnight releases, uh, for Call of Duty, for Diablo, for it all. Zelda sold out. Um, you name it. Hogwarts. There's lines outside the door, wrapped around the building. It's absolutely phenomenal. But... I didn't have to go that route. I don't want to show you the other videos like that, Rich. I'm just, I'm sad for you because you have done minimal research on this. Like, I'll give you the example in the PC world, right? So we're going to go to GameStop really quick. And if you go to the actual GameStop website, which is zoomed in on my screen here, but you'll see that they sell everything to build a computer. So you need a computer to download those games. And you need accessories. And if I want to switch out the accessories of any game that I need, I'm going to come to GameStop.com and I'm going to be able to buy them. Just like I would go to Newegg or any other, I don't know, I guess Amazon as well, or BestBuy.com. But here you can buy everything you need. The power supply, the cooling source, um, the RAM, the graphics cards, you know, the processor itself, everything's at GameStop. You can literally build your new computer at GameStop. So, yes, I hear where you're coming from about digital gaming. It's not something that I fear. You know, the thing in life about business is I don't run from things, I run at them. So I think GameStop does the same thing. They've changed the business model. If you want to buy a go-kart, you go to GameStop. If you want to buy a drone, you go to GameStop. If you want to buy a TV and a mount, you go to GameStop. So if you want to buy a PC or the components, you go to GameStop. The number one thing digitally for gamers, period, that you would have to replace are controllers. It's not new games because you might find a game you love, but that controller will die on you. 
And it's almost impossible to find controllers because it's the number one replaced accessory. So you have to know that too. You can't just download games or go buy games. Right? You actually have to have the console to play them. Last I checked, there's no PlayStation Store or Xbox Store. So the fact that GameStop sells more electronics, more gaming electronics than Best Buy, that should tell you something. And they do. Go look at the Best Buy balance sheet. But I've already done that part for you. Uh, I've done the homework. I, I see you haven't. But we'll keep going on with your video here. I'm going to skip this part of the other video because it has a copyright in it. And I don't want to do that part. But here you go. He showed the video of the girl. She, it's the video that's going around on TikTok where she's like, I'm in an empty store. It's empty all the time. Yeah, I know. I know it is. We're going to have that conversation in a minute. We music has taken over for the Curb Your Enthusiasm ending. Remember from HBO? No. <laughs> like anytime there's a fail, they had the Curb Your Enthusiasm. I actually want to tell you this. I've never seen one episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. I mean, it tells me a lot about who you are as a person. Disgruntled gamer. I get that, but never seen one episode. It's not funny. Yeah, as a music, the Wii music has taken over for that. I, I think that, isn't that when you created Mies? It's been a long time, man. The friggin' Wii came out in 2006, cut me some slack. Now in the comments of her video, there were other GameStop employees saying how, uh, how lively their stores are. Let's take a look. Someone named uh, Tyler here wrote, the repetitive ads on the TV would drive me insane. And it has 2,667 likes of the time of me filming this video. I was in there for about 25 minutes the other day and heard the ad loop at least three times. Someone wrote, dream job, except you have to tell people you work at GameStop. Someone wrote here, I love how it was constantly berated for being on my phone not gonna lie you're at work you shouldn't be on your phone all the time even if it's dead but in an empty store with absolutely nothing else to do I don't miss that company and someone else here wrote who was another GameStop employee the accuracy I promoted myself to customer a few months ago and it was the best decision lol prepare for the GameStop simps to find the comments are there really GameStop simps I don't I don't know any <laughs> When I make these videos, people are like, oh, God, Rich, look, I don't go to GameStop anymore, but you've been talking about GameStop dying since 2013. Well, yeah, because I saw the writing on the wall. I knew it was going to be a slow decline, but it's slower than I thought. But I knew this day was coming. I knew it was coming. As soon as I saw the push for digital distribution in the early 2010s, here we are. Now, if you want to go check out the GameStop video by Hot and Spicy Curry, I'll have a link to the Daily Dot article below in the description. Her video is in there as well. I, I really think this is the death throes of GameStop. They, they could try, they tried getting into the mobile phone business. It didn't work. They tried getting into the selling old used consoles like retro consoles. That didn't work. Uh, they're trying toys now because that's gonna save them, that, that that didn't work. They were gonna try competitive game stores where people pl came in and played games competitively. Haven't really seen that even. I'm sure there's probably some test markets, but is that really gonna save them? There's a lot of times you hear these esports teams that they're not making any money. So what's GameStop gonna do? Are they gonna magically make money off of it? I'm amazed that GameStop has lasted as long as it has. I, I, I thought they would have been at best, maybe at Blockbuster's point when Blockbuster fully collapsed by this time. That's so I'll give them that, but who's going into GameStop unless it's like select regions where you have bad internet. But like I said before, even if you have bad internet, the damn discs for the games don't really have data on them. Or they have just, you know, sometimes I'll have like a gigabyte or they still, you have to download 30 gigabytes from the store, whether you're on PSN or Xbox Live. And then you, what are you gonna do? You still have to download a bunch of crap, so what was the benefit of buying the disc? Okay, maybe you're a physical collector, you like the box art, that's really the only justifiable reason at this point. It's not gonna help you with your slow internet, it's not gonna help you with anything, and there's a lot of times they don't even include the damn game in the box anymore. The Switch was like one of the first where you went out and bought a game and you would just open up the box and get a digital code. So it was like, what the hell's the point? 
that was what really set me off. Between me in 2017 thinking that I lost all of my Switch games and games just not really coming on the disc anymore, <laughs> or a disc or a cartridge not being included at all, depending on if you're playing on a home console or the Nintendo Switch, the hell's the point? I just thought to myself, especially on the Switch, I'm just gonna buy a big SD card, like the way I bought the one terabyte SD card and call it a day. Why am I, there's no reason to buy games physical anymore. Mostly, I should say. And that was GameStop's bread and butter. Especially during the seventh and sixth generations, man, they were making a killing with the used games. They would buy the game from you or you could trade in the game and get some more money and you would get store credit because if you got store credit, that means you would buy something else at the store. So they would incentivize you to do that. But even then, it's still you were getting ripped off. And then they'd flip those games around and sell them for double the price if it was a new game that you just bought for 60 bucks and you're like, look, I want to trade this in or I want to get money back for it. They would give you nothing and then they would sell it for $5 cheaper than the new game was at MSRP. They were making buttloads of money with that, but those days are gone because no one's buying physical anymore. I just showed you the numbers. Numbers don't lie. So. I like that. Numbers don't lie. I've let you talk a lot here. I kind of figured you out, Rich. Apparently, you haven't done your homework. I did my homework on you, though. Because before I make the video, I got to go do the homework. And you're right. You have been talking bad about GameStop for a long time. Kind of like one of your most watched videos. It's right here. It says, a former GameStop employee uh, shares his stories. And you gave him the pub. You got over a million something views on the video. And all they're doing is bad-mouthing GameStop and bashing it left and right. But that was fine. I know what you're doing. And it's cool. You know, when you talk about games, just in general, just so you can understand the business model for GameStop, selling video games and then giving you value for something that you used is unheard of. There's not a single place out here in the corporate world that is going to give you value for something that you bought and turned by it back from you. So you're crying about getting value for it. You can go sell it yourself. But see how hard that is. See who would want to buy it back from you at this premium price that you're trying to get. GameStop is doing all the groundwork for you, and you're mad that they gave you 30 bucks for your game and sold it for 55 Is that it? Did you think GameStop was a rent -a center But my other part about that, too, is you have a Switch. You have all the gaming consoles. You have monitors in your back. You have everything you want in your life, even a gaming chair. Do you know where you need to go to buy all of that? At the place that supplies all of that. But you're oblivious to this. But I'm going to let this keep going on because I'm going to touch on what really is happening here. We're almost done with this video, guys. Help me. I don't know, man. It'll be interesting. This I know the whole thing with Wall Street bets happened, but that wasn't actually indicative of how the company's health was and how it was doing. That was just some crazy ass anomaly because you had a bunch of uh, retail investors trying to get back at hedge funds and it actually worked. Some people I know, who the hell would have thought? Talk about a lottery ticket who had GameStop stock at that time. It blew up and some people became millionaires. Who the hell would have saw that? coming but besides for that the company as a whole is in deep trouble and I don't even think we needed this video from hot and spicy curry to know that this is rich a review tech USA signing out hey thanks rich I appreciate you for signing out but now that we're done with the bullshit let's get to the real stuff okay so here's the part where you get educated because I'm, I'm done playing your game you literally don't know a damn thing about GameStop but I'm gonna educate you so we're gonna go ahead and talk about First thing we're talking about is gaming. How you just generalize that they don't sell games or they don't make profits off of games. This is the last three years. Fiscal years for GameStop. Hardware and accessories, which I tell you is what they sell. The bread and butter, by the way. Software, which is falling off, right? Isn't that what you said? And then collectibles, toys. They try to do toys. What does it matter? Well, go ahead and look at this really quick. So, as you can see, GameStop's hardline in accessories is flat from last year to this year. It's a great number. $3 billion worth of, worth of product. The next one is going to be software, where it dropped down about $180, $190 million. But when you compare it to 2020, it's right on par with the drop-off, about $180, $170 million. But do you know what they increased that $170 that they're missing from the gaming disconnect that you see? It's right there. It's, it's collectibles. So when you look at collectibles, they're up about $140 million 
from year over year. When you take it to 2020, they're up $400 million. Number one growing category, period, for GameStop. So if you ever really want to know why GameStop's surviving and doing so well, it's because the business model works. It's an amazing business model. But we're going to go up so I can really show you something that you're just oblivious about. But, you know, you want to say there's so many stores and whatever it may be. Let's talk about how GameStop has 2,949 U.S. stores. Total stores is going to be at 4,413. I got to go all the way down to get to the number. It's right about here. So 4,413 stores is what GameStop has. They previously had 4,573. They closed 168. They used to average, okay, and I even had to do this math for you, $1.314 million, okay? They increased that number by $30,000. This is per store. They are making more money per store with the ones that they have kept open. They have closed the buildings that are empty, as you would call it in that video, by Hot and Spicy Curry. They're making $30,000 more dollars a year per store. Now, why does that matter? Because they're selling warranties. They're selling memberships. They are in business. They are making money. And there's an increase on every category I just named for you year over year over year. You're, you're oblivious. I get that you don't go to the website and you don't order things. You don't understand the transition that is. But they are flat on top line revenue while closing 168 stores. They make more money per store today than they did last year. There it is, 168 stores, and here's top line revenue, 5.9 versus 6 flat. Still almost a billion dollars more than 2020. And why? Because what you don't gauge and what you can't figure out is when that store is empty, it's still open. It's still open online. GameStop.com is generating how much money? Do you have those numbers? Because numbers don't lie. You know what else doesn't lie? I'm looking at you. And I don't want to make the assumption that you're single or that you're not a father. But I don't see a ring on your finger. All I see is a disgruntled gamer. That's what I see. I see a guy who got burned a couple of times on trade-ins and or just wants to pick a fight. Well, this is not the fight you're going to win. You made a video. It's getting views. You're a, a millionaire 10 times over with YouTube. You do whatever you want there. But I take my children to GameStop. And it's the number one spot for them and they love going. This is in the fabric of what we are. We're gamers. And they're born every day. You... You can sit there and complain about what you don't get. But remember where you're getting your Switch. Remember where you get your PlayStation 5. And remember where you're going to get your PlayStation 6. I went and looked at your channel and I saw everything you do. You badmouth Sony, Xbox. You badmouth every console, every game. All of your videos are the same. This is in dire. This is dire. This is dire straight. Like it's, it's all the same for you. It's okay. You don't understand the investment that is GameStop. You don't understand the leadership and the direction they're going. But you're streaming. You're a streamer. Educate yourself here, please. Rich, GameStop's launching Player. You don't even know what that is either. You want to talk about money? You want to talk about revenue? They, it's infinite ways. But you got to catch up. And stop telling me what, who doesn't buy games and who does. And here's a percentage of shoppers. And No. I just showed you the numbers. Okay? Whatever they're missing on software they're making it up in collectibles and hardware is hardware babe and they sell a lot of it i'll see you at gamestop if you ever want to show up it's it's going to be packed around the corners midnight releases they come out final fantasy just happened street fighter just happened what's the next game coming out we can name them all they keep coming diablo 4 oh i gotta go play hey rich educate yourself though you're embarrassing yourself peace